Welcome to part three of the history of Final Fantasy. In this part, we'll be exploring the 32-bit era of Final Fantasy and how it went from being a series of fairly popular games to a series of blockbusters. Nearly everyone knows about how the next game in the series, Final Fantasy VII, became an international blockbuster, selling millions of copies and changing the genre of RPGs from a niche genre to major releases. But few people seem to know the true story of its origins. One thing that was significant about Final Fantasy VII was its release on Sony's PlayStation console. After six releases for Nintendo consoles, many gamers assumed that the series would jump to Nintendo's oncoming new system, the Nintendo 64. The common story was that everyone hears is that Squaresoft planned on releasing Final Fantasy VII for the Nintendo 64, and even made a prototype, which can be seen in video form, showing characters from Final Fantasy VI in 3D battling monsters. The story goes that after working with the Nintendo 64 hardware for some time, Squaresoft decided that their ambitions were quelled by the limitations of the cartridge format and then canceled the game and reimagined it on the PlayStation, a less powerful machine, but one that used CD-ROM technology, which allowed for greater storage space to do what they needed. The story is interesting, but the fact is, it's just not true. The video that everyone is familiar with, with Final Fantasy VI characters battling in 3D, is not running on Nintendo 64 hardware, but PC hardware. It was actually created before the Nintendo 64 hardware was revealed. The demo is actually a fully completed mini-game that goes by several names, and one of them is Final Fantasy X. Yeah, X as in the letter, not as in 10. Anyway, the demo was never intended to be Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII actually started its life as a 16-bit game on the Super Famicom, just like Final Fantasy IV, V, and VI before it. Seven was going to actually take place in a very familiar world. Ours, in fact, in the year 1999 in New York City. I can't help but wonder how that would have turned out. Squaresoft canceled the game to focus on newer hardware and did, in fact, hope to work with Nintendo. But the story of working on the game for the Nintendo 64 for a while before changing their minds is also untrue. They decided not to work with the hardware as soon as the cartridge format was announced. In fact, they had held off on developing the game, pending an announcement from Nintendo, hoping that they can continue their relationship. But it just wasn't meant to be. So Squaresoft started working with Sony, a relationship that continues to this day. The end result of Final Fantasy VII is a game nearly everyone is familiar with. Although it has become immediately known for its detailed FMV sequences and futuristic design, the core gameplay is not all that changed from Final Fantasy VI. A rotating cast of characters, the ATB system, an emphasis on storytelling, and of course the usual familiar themes such as chocobos, moogles, and such. Final Fantasy VII was a massive success in all regions, leading to the public to think of RPGs in a different light, due in no small part to Square's heavy marketing campaign that took advantage of the game's cinematic scope by creating television ads similar to movie trailers. Seven's impact goes further, as it is the first game to be localized in America with the same title since its original Final Fantasy, leading to a lot of confusion, which for the most part got cleared up via the internet. The American public found out that 2 and 3 were really 4 and 6, and demand for the missing games led to eventual releases of all the games on various different systems. Commercially, Final Fantasy VII was one of the most successful games of all time. Critically, it's been called both the best game ever and overrated. But regardless of what you think of the game, its historical importance is rather significant. The story's merits have also been hotly debated. The game follows Cloud Strife, a soldier working against a stereotypical evil corporation, Shinra, believing that they are harming the planet. Also working against them is Sephiroth, a former comrade of Cloud's who turns out to be a much greater threat and the main villain of the game. The character cast of Final Fantasy VII is one of the most well-known, and characters like Cloud, Sephiroth, Aerith, and Tifa would show up in later games and media and become a big part of pop culture. 
The next game in the series, Final Fantasy VIII, would turn out to be another black sheep of the series. Similar to Seven, the game was heavily marketed as a cinematic experience, and that's basically what it is, with greater detail being put into realistic graphics, more seamless transitions between gameplay and FMV, and a story with a large focus on the romance between the two characters, Squall and Renoa. While it seems that Squaresoft did everything they could to improve on the already successful Seven, Eight received extremely mixed reviews from both critics and fans. While the game was praised for its graphics, attention to detail, soundtrack, and plot, heavy criticisms were laid against the gameplay, with many people called overly complicated and the characters who have been described as dull and lifeless. The game's plot involves a group of young mercenaries who battle against warring nations, as well as sorceresses from the future led by Ultimisha, who wishes to compress time into a single moment. Throughout the game, the plot focuses heavily on the romance, of course, and that's usually seen as being one of the game's best aspects. Final Fantasy VIII was also criticized for being a departure, with a focus on realism in its designs and many Final Fantasy conventions being either missing or greatly reduced. One reference that is strongly kept, however, is the concept of a time loop, borrowed from the very first Final Fantasy game. Though many fans would mock and deride the game, it did have its fans, and while the gameplay is often derided, the plot and graphics are usually praised, and the game was a huge commercial success. Squaresoft, however, was not deaf to criticisms, and the next game in the series would remedy many of the concerns fans and critics had with Final Fantasy VIII.